My name is Seth Kircher. I'm a solution architect manager responsible for fast tracks business in the Americas, focused on our Dynamics 365 CE customers. In this session, I'll provide an overview of Success by Design, which is the framework that fast track and our qualified partners use to help drive Dynamics 365 implementation success for our customers. Based on the learnings of literally thousands of Dynamics 365 implementations, the hallmark of success by design is proactive guidance based on those learnings and sound solution architecture that is product roadmap aligned, which hopefully results in successful implementations that afford customers the ability to maximize their investment in Dynamics 365. Importantly, FastTrack doesn't have a special lease on success by design. Instead, it's our goal to make success by design available widely. And that is exactly what this training is about. I can't really say it better than this quote from our Dynamics 365 partner Orbis, but let me try to summarize anyway. You can think of success by design as a template or framework for increasing solution quality and decreasing risk. It also offers a direct route for cooperation with the Microsoft product team where necessary, with the goal, obviously, of better project outcomes. And with these thoughts in mind, let's continue. Microsoft often gets the question, but isn't success by design just another methodology? The simple answer is no, but, but let's unpack this. Methodologies come in all shapes and sizes and are used by our community of implementers to appropriately analyze, design, develop, test, and deploy Dynamics 365 solutions. Every methodology uses a structured approach for producing key deliverables and arriving at critical project milestones with the goal of bringing the solution live. But methodology itself does little to guarantee that the resulting solution is roadmap aligned or that it follows recommended practices. And, and that's where success by design comes in. Success by design is a governance framework that was created by Microsoft, which is tailored specifically for Dynamics 365 implementations and represents key questions, guidance, and thinking, which affords project teams the ability to assess alignment with the Dynamics 365 product roadmap and recommended practices and patterns for implementing Dynamics 365 solutions. So it goes beyond methodology. And in this sense, it can be used alongside whatever methodology the project team uses for a better result in the end. How success by design works is relatively simple. As the project lifecycle unfolds from analysis to design to development into testing and deployment, a series of workshops or what we call reviews on general as well as discrete topics leads to questions that explore both project and technical aspects of the engagement, which then results in findings and recommendations that are based on the experience and outcomes of literally thousands of implementations. Let's dig into this a little more. Success by design always starts with the solution blueprint review, which is one of two mandatory workshops or reviews. In this first formal opportunity to take a closer look at the project and the technical solution in its early stages. It offers an early understanding of the issues and risks that may face the project and an opportunity to formally address them with key project stakeholders, including the customer. And solution blueprint review findings may necessitate going deeper into specific areas. And for this, Implementation workshops are designed to do just that. Lastly, the Go Live Readiness Review, which is the other mandatory workshop in Success by Design, it assesses the readiness of the project team to bring the solution live. But let's add some context to these workshops.
Success by design is based on access to key project artifacts. Look at the slide. Early on in the project lifecycle, the solution blueprint review relies on review of project plans, requirements document, the fit gap analysis, the beginnings of solution design, that this might include design of the core solution, integrations, data. Without these artifacts, it's likely that the resulting findings and recommendations may be incomplete and could necessitate doing the solution blueprint review a second time. This is fine, actually, and it's sometimes necessary. Findings and recommendations coming out of the solution blueprint review always governs which implementation workshops may be leveraged going forward. This is key. Let's look at an example. A finding coming out of the solution blueprint review may be that performance testing was not included in the scope of the project, yet the project, uh, the solution being built is a 4,000 user call center solution, which includes heavy integrations to legacy systems and at least one complex customization that has been deemed a must have for the business. Following this example, it's appropriate to schedule the solution performance workshop. The customer's view that the Dynamics 365 platform should be performance on its own, and this is actually a reasonable expectation, but the delivery of the solution performance workshop will also be a good opportunity to educate the project team on the topic and to double click into the details of how customization can actually impact solution performance above and beyond the Dynamics 365 platform. But let's pause for a second. Beyond this example, the point is that any implementation workshop scheduled should be based on actual solution blueprint review findings with the understanding that diving into specific areas, whether it be solution performance, integration, data modeling, application lifecycle management, security, you name it, will also be helpful to the project team in addressing known or potential project or technical risks. Besides the solution blueprint review, as we talked about a second ago, the Go Live Readiness Review is the other mandatory Success by Design workshop. In fact, you can think of the Solution Blueprint Review and the Go Live Readiness Review as bookends of the Success by Design framework. With the Go Live Readiness Review, we obviously take a closer look at test results and Go Live plans to determine the readiness to, of, of the project team to bring the solution into the hands of end users. The success by design pattern is straightforward. Workshops or views invite a format for intentional project team level discovery and discussion where risks and issues are identified. Recommendations are made based on established patterns and practices. And despite the very real pressure of timeline, budget, resources, all aspects that drive engagement, Success by Design invites project teams to pause and address the risks and issues that are identified through the process. Prescriptive guidance is given to do so, and the goal is simple, project success. This slide represents a more granular look at the Success by Design process. Again, observations are matched to known patterns, which lead to findings, which lead to opportunities to address the risks and issues identified. Let's take a closer look. There are three types of findings. Assertions, these are findings that are already in line with best practices. Risks, on the other hand, are findings that have the potential to negatively impact the project, whereas issues are findings that are in fact negatively impacting the project in its current state. With these definitions in mind, success by design has, has it that findings should always include the details of what we saw, how we think about it, and ultimately what we recommend, again, based on known patterns and practices. And the more detail, the better. 
The last stop in success by design is something we called success measures. When success by design was created by Microsoft, it was acknowledged that applying success by design to a specific project would be helpful, well, to that specific project. But Microsoft also acknowledged the need to surface macro trends and impacts to multiple projects. Accordingly, if yours is a fast track eligible project, either supported directly by fast track or by a qualified partner, on top of documenting detailed findings, the process that we previously discussed in this session, fast track driven projects make use of Microsoft success by design tooling to summarize uh, project health across seven categories and some 30 success measures. Let's take a look at those now. Architecture, project governance, product, implementation, fit for purpose, competency, and support. The way this works, after a success by design review, or it could be some other compelling project event, Microsoft or the qualified partner accesses success by design tooling. Yes, this is only uh, available to partners and to uh, Microsoft Fast Track users and updates the success measures for the project. Updates made include a simple red, yellow, or green statusing across any of the success measures, could be any of the ones that we see listed on the slide here, including entry of any other useful details. The benefit of tracking success measures is that it provides an at-a-glance view of the project's health. And when you consider 10, 20, 100 projects, Microsoft and the partner can begin to spot trends, problem areas, or challenges that have faced multiple projects. For example, we might identify that there have been ongoing problems in the area of ALM. And such a macro view allows Microsoft and or the partner to dig deeper and ask, is the ALM problem a project team competency issue? Is it a product problem or something else? And this digging deeper allows us to understand and address those issues for the long-term benefit, not just of a single project, but for all of our customers going forward. With the Success by Design overview complete, following sessions will dig deeper into this framework. Our next stop, engagement model and project governance. Thank you very much for your time.